Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have some great news today. We got some parts in from Brian Tooley Racing. As you can see, we got a bunch of AN fittings for our fuel system. And if you did not know, Brian Tooley Racing now stocks AN fittings and line. So I've been dealing with them a bunch through this build. As you can see, uh, we have like their camshaft, their intake manifold, all kinds of goodies inside the engine that are Brian Tooley Racing and they're just great guys to deal with. And if you follow their Facebook page, they're always doing draws for like free cam giveaways or cam package giveaways, all kinds of free goodies. So make sure to go follow their Facebook page. Also, one of the coolest YouTubers ever works there, Logan from Clapped Out. So if you guys don't follow that channel, um, they do some hilarious stuff and really, really fast RX-7. And another good news, we got ourselves a orange Turbo 400. I actually have to thank Mill Run for helping me get this. Uh, he was a big part in getting this transmission. It is orange, Chevy orange. We're gonna go fast, obviously. It's got a reverse manual valve, re reverse valve body in it, and a trans brake right here. Might as well shove this in us, because I'm gonna dread putting this transmission in. I've not been looking forward to putting this transmission in for a while now, because the way my setup is, I jammed this engine as far back as I could, and now there's like no room between the firewall and the engine here. So unbolting the bell housing is a real pain. And uh, oh yeah, if you haven't seen this, this is how this turned out. It's safe to say we're getting a little bit better, especially compared to something like this. So if you put these side by side, these were our first welds that we started doing with the TIG torch. And then these are our new ones. There it is, um, getting it out. The easy part, we gotta switch our converter from this trans to this one. And uh, these little fittings as well right here that connect or adapt these to uh, AN fittings. We gotta take those as well. That wasn't so bad, but I mean, getting it out is the easy part, putting it back in, not so fun. So. It'll be a lot cleaner because this old one was uh, dirty as shit. And I think our Moroso oil pan actually has a little leak in it, so that sucks. So, transmission, well, transmission is in. We just have to bolt the converter in um, and the drive shaft. We gotta make a new transmission mount because uh, this one is, it was pretty much just temporary, but I think we can do better than this. So uh, I think that's gonna be our next task here. Yeah, we can do way better than this. I think I'm just gonna make it out of this um, one by two steel stock that I have back there. And uh, we'll get something together here. Seb, my grinder just gave out. I can smell it, it's like burnt out now too. Shit. Still plugged in too. Sad. Actually, I bought some wire wheels for uh, this bench grinder, so maybe we'll use that to clean off our metal. That'd probably be a smarter idea.
ghosts fade away. Human hearts on so lucky. Those battle scars. Well, here's our bracket so far. It'll probably be like the strongest part on the car because it's made out of 40 pounds of material, but we have to drill some holes here to mount our uh, mount and then get some hardware because we don't have enough hardware for this right here. Just slowly picking away at things so we can drive it, but it doesn't matter about finishing it today because I don't have all the pieces, like the, the shift lever pieces to make it work. Well, welcome back. I have no idea where we left off the video, so it's gonna be a weird transition from the last clip to this clip. Yeah, because it's been a couple days. So one thing I have noticed that is a really huge piss off is that our Moroso pan is leaking from like a, a weld up here. Like I welded it right here, but there's a weld up inside this corner right here. Up on this corner right here somewhere that is leaking and it's pissing out all our oil. So that's a gigantic piss off. Cause I spent some decent money on that Moroso pan. Damn. And in case anyone was wondering, yes, we can put a four inch boot on here. There's like half an inch of clearance here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a four inch boot here. We have an aluminum 45 that we're gonna put here and then just an air filter somewhere right there. And then that way, it's gonna get fresh air from beside the radiator, hopefully, but not from the trans cooler. I mean, technically we could put the air filter out here. The only, technically the air filter can go out here. The only issue is like the tire is right there and it'll get dirty really fast. So we've just got our holes marked out here for our mount. They match these holes and then uh, just get some hardware for it. Well, I gotta drill the holes first. Dan conveniently put this thing, like he taped the tool just far enough on this that when I plug it in all the way over there, this doesn't reach, so I gotta unplug it every time. Thanks, Dan. Let's try a bigger drill bit. So weird, these drill bits don't like drilling through eight inch steel. Oh wait, maybe he did need leave a long one. Sorry Dan. Sorry Dan, I cussed you out for nothing. You did leave it long enough. Well, we definitely know where the limitations are of our drill press. What I wanted to do was I wanted this to be big enough that I could just bolt to the bottom side of this so I could fit the bolt through here with a socket. So it still need to be opened up quite a bit because the head of the bolt still doesn't even fit through here. Sad. I do have a Dremel though. That's annoying. I was gonna use my grinder just to cut two slots right here. And then I remembered a couple days ago, it was like, So super sad. You have served me well. Well, after far too much screwing around, our hole is still not big enough for our socket. I guess the moral of the story here is don't try and do extra, because only extras make extras extra. I don't know what to do now. I can definitely say with confidence, one of the worst ideas I've ever had. <laughs> I finally got it. I had to use the Dremel for most of it, and then Oh yeah. Finally got it to go in place. Hey, I was just putting my pants on to go get bolts and I noticed something. What is down here? Can you see it? I can see it. 
Always! What the heck? So I was going to get bolts right. And I was like, mm, I wonder if Canyon Tire has anything on sale. And then I went on the sale flyer and it was like, hey, we got an angle grinder for sale. So 50 bucks. You can't see it because the way the light and the camera and my bank account is set up, but 50 bucks. And it's a five inch one. That way we can actually use our five inch blades now with a guard because this is a four and a half inch. So we upgraded and this one's nine amps and this one was only six. So more amps has to be more better, right? Look at it, will ya? Look at the size difference. This is gonna be way harder to put in small spots. So maybe I'll have to replace this one with another one. These were actually on sale as well. Um, you could get two for a hundred bucks and this one was 55 or this one was 65 at like normal sale price, but in the garbage. So we already spent 55 bucks today, which means this video won't make 55 bucks, so we lost money today. But if I was in the business of making money, I wouldn't be building cars. So take that logic. There. Transmission's in, bolted in. Drive shaft's bolted in. I did add a little bit of spacer on the back. It's a 5.8 spacer. And uh, if you can see it, there's a line right here, it's about an inch away. And that's actually our bottom out line. So that's the drive shaft in all the way. So we should be good on like there. This thing's extra long, it's like seven and a half inches, something like that, that drive shaft. So should be good there. Under the car footage is so sick Kyle, sick content. Could be worse. I can make a whole video on washing a car. Next we gotta unbolt our pan to put our dipstick in. I didn't cheat butter on a dipstick. These things were like 150 bucks. A low car locking dipstick. Versus uh, this style dipstick, which is like 30 bucks. But the thing is they use like a solid wire here. And if you have any bend to this thing at all, this doesn't want to go back in as you can tell. Whereas with this style, oh my God, this thing's like vacuum packed. Anyways, and then with this style, um, you obviously get the lock, so it locks on the top, but you can see that they use like a, a cable, a wound cable, and it's actually much easier if there's a bend in the line to push it through the bend. And where our transmission sits, it kind of comes up through the firewall like a big S. And with that normal style, just metal wire, it just, it physically doesn't want to go in. I learned this lesson really hard on the Supra, so, we didn't cheap out on a dipstick. Uh, and the reason for having to take the pan off is that this style low car dipstick actually locks in there. So this half goes on the outside and then this is on the inside of the pan and it actually locks the dipstick in. So it's actually really nice dipstick. Well now, after some finagling and moving things around, we got our dipstick up here. It has to be mounted somewhere. Uh, it used to be mounted down here somewhere, so maybe that. This has to be mounted. We also have some transmission cooler lines. They have to be tied up and tied to something. There wasn't really a good way to run this, just the way that my downpipe ran and where the fittings are back here, so. Both of those are run. It's actually like a big, I don't know, I think it's 29,000 BTU unit, whatever that means. And it just, one slips around here and then one slips around the back. Right there. And then yeah, so we got our crossover pipe back on. The only thing we don't have on is the linkage. The only thing we don't have on underneath there is the shift linkage. I'm waiting for the three speed reverse gate. I did order it on Amazon and they sent me a message. They were like, hey, we didn't ship that yet. So we're gonna ship it today. So that was yesterday. And then uh, this piece any longer bolts for. We also did get a new low car throttle cable and this is just gonna replace this black cable here that I have um, just temporarily there. We're gonna have to build a little mount for this side and then this side goes in through the cabin, but that's how that's gonna go. We have our new BTR fittings so we can um, finally uh, put our wastegate where we, or I mean our fuel regulator where we wanted it. And there's just a bunch of little things 
left it do that I want to do before I actually take it out, but it's almost ready to go for its first drive again. The biggest thing is that uh, gate for the shifter so we can actually drive it. Most of these tasks are gonna take a little bit of time and we don't have a lot of time left. We have like 30 minutes for the day. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bolt the hot side back up again in the bumper and see what it kind of looks like all back together again. There it is. I mean, it's definitely starting to come together. And of course, there's like a million little things that I'd love to do, just, I keep pushing them on so I can get more of the bigger specific things done. But to clean up this engine bay, I'll show you a couple things here. So our wiring system here, um, a lot of these power wires are gonna move inside when we build us a little relay board. I have some big wire to go inside the cab. Um, this is gonna get cleaned up, all these like uh, lines right here. Uh, when I built my new fuel system. These coolant hoses that are hanging out here, I may put coolant back into it. It depends if I can get it into here, down there. So right now it's just looped. And then, um, yeah. Now I know this build has taken forever, guys, and I really appreciate you guys sticking around. And, and for those of you who love to do what I like to do, and, and it's the build process that I love, and it's not so much the, I need to drive it every weekend to feel happy. It's the build to get there that I really enjoy. So going from what we had last time into what we have this time and how much I've learned along the way and how I can progress that onto other builds is, is huge for me. And that's the main thing. I didn't want to just buy a kit I could bolt on. That's super annoying. Like all these builds of just building a wide bodied car. Okay, we bolt this on, bolt that on. Boom, we built it. It's just, it doesn't appeal to me. And uh, so maybe it doesn't appeal to you guys too. And that's why you're subscribed. So thank you guys for sticking around. That's all we have time for, for today. Um, I'm going to be back out here as soon as I can. I do have a whole bunch of other footage that I do have from the track when we went that I might throw together there. I don't know. You guys seem to like this more. So I, I tend not to upload a lot of things that I do have. Anyways, I have a big mess to clean up. I want to clean that up before I leave. So. Peace easy, get that V. Nice that you can run 10-1, throw some street tires on it, and run down the road with your AC on.